In this video, we're going to talk about how you set up your specs to control bolting in CADWorks. And I'm showing you some examples here. This is CADWorks and it's running in what's called an enhanced mode. When you turn that switch on in CADWorks, it will draw all the bolts and the nuts and the washers for you. If you don't have any bolting in there, but you just have a flange, it'll draw the holes in the flange as well as the pipe. But here are some examples. Let's take a look at this first one. This is how the system is going to draw bolts if you don't do anything. This is straight out of the box. And what it's doing is it's putting in a bolt with one nut on it. It's got a bolt head here, a nut, and quite a long extension. This example doesn't have any washers in it. You have the ability to specify the number of washers or not, depending on how you want to construct things. If we scroll down a little bit, here's that same bolt, but we've set a round off value on it. We're telling it to round up to the nearest quarter inch. Also in this example, the system is actually calculating that bolt length. What it's doing is it's adding the thickness of the flange, gasket flange, plus the height of that nut, plus an extension setting that we'll look at later, and whatever value that is, it's then rounding that up to the nearest quarter inch. Coming down a little bit further, here's one that's calculated across a wider component. You can actually stack two different components in between flanges if you want to do that. But whenever you stack components like that in there, they have to have what are called wafer end type. This example shows a butterfly valve in between two flanges, and this is just out of the spec itself. It ships with the system. If we double click it for a moment, we can see that it's a butterfly valve, a wafer type, and it's got the end type set to work between two flanges like this. But here's the bolt head. It's going fully across it. It's got the nut. It's got the extension, and it just came out with a calculation there. If I double click that bolt for a minute and we look at it, we can see that it came out with six and a quarter inches long for the length of that bolt. Continuing on, Let's take a look at some other examples up in here. This is an example of a stud bolt. This is a type 2 bolt. And in this example, I've got washers on each end as well. And I've told the system to calculate that length and then round up to the nearest quarter inch. So we'll have the ability to do several kinds of bolts here. We can do a bolt type that it doesn't calculate a length at all. We can do a machine type bolt with a head and a nut with or without washers. We can also do stud bolts like I've shown here. So we have choices on how we want this to come out. Now when you start working with bolting, the best thing to do is just get familiar with this user guide and study up on it a little bit. It'll just make life easier for you. I've opened this user guide. This is the CADWorks Spec Editor User Guide. It's an Adobe file. Again, it comes in the CADWorks folder in the specs subfolder. Go ahead and find it and open it up. And if you scroll down toward the bottom in my edition of this user guide, I'm on page 196, but it's back toward the back of the book. And they talk about property descriptions here. So you can have project properties, spec properties, library properties. Finally, you get down to catalog properties data table properties. And that's where I found this section on bolts, gaskets, bolts, and wells. Let me close this so we can see this a little bit better. But in the bolts section, they explain what the different column names in the various tables are. You have a size column, the number of bolts per set, diameter, length, bolt type, nut count, nut thickness, bolt extension, let me scroll up a little bit. We have a tolerance. This is the round off value. The weight, it's kind of interesting on the weight. If you leave the weight value zero in the stud bolts data table, the system will actually calculate the weight for you based on the density of that material. If you put a value greater than zero in that field, it'll use that. It has a field for washer thickness, how many washers. You can also do a part number down in here in these tables as well. So you could assign your own unique part numbers to these bolts if you want to. There's also the ability to have it dynamically look up a part number for you based on the bolt diameter and the bolt length. There's a couple of tables we can add to handle that. And we'll talk about part numbers pretty extensively in future videos. 
we scroll down a little bit further and look at some of this information here, we have a section in here on how it calculates the length of these bolts. So this is the type 1 bolt. If you put a type 0 in that field, it'll just use whatever value you give it. It won't try to calculate anything. If you set it to type 1, well then it's going to be coming out with a bolt like this. It'll have a bolt head on it, a nut on it. You do have the option to add washers in here on, on either both sides or one side. Here's a type 2, which is going to be a stud bolt. And again, you can set extensions on both of these. Coming down a little further, here's some examples. This is where you have a nut count set to 1, a washer count of 0, so it's going to give you this type of bolt. Nut count 2, washer count 2, so a nut on each end, two washers. Here's an example, nut count 5, washer count 4, so three nuts over here, two over here, two washers on each side. And then here we see the formula that it uses to calculate bolt lengths. It has parentheses here, it has a term X, and that's actually the thickness of components that this bolt has to go through. So it might be a flange thickness and a gasket thickness and another flange, or it could be a butterfly valve. Whatever the components are that this bolt is holding together is going to be added up and you're going to come out with an X value. Then it'll add the nut thickness times the number of nuts involved and a bolt extension. It has one extension in this example and in a type 1 bolt it'll have one extension. Then it'll have the washer thicknesses in there. So it'll come out with a total length and then it'll apply that round setting. It'll either not round it at all it'll round it up to some value. In my case, I set it for a quarter inch. It can round it down to the nearest quarter inch, or it can round it up or down. So you have options on how you want to round these bolts off. For a type two, there's a formula for it as well. And it'll have two bolt extensions on it, but it's a very similar calculation. One thing that's important to mention here is the sentence about the bolt length. And the system will calculate a bolt length. We've seen that right up in here. And it'll come up with a value. But also in the data table, there's a field to put in a bolt length. And if you have a longer length in that data table, it's going to use that. It'll just disregard the calculated length and use whatever you already have in the data table. So that's something to be aware of. And we saw that actually happen when we first started looking at this video at those examples. And I mentioned that the bolt that came in out of the box had a longer extension than what I would like. And that's because in the bolt table there was a length given that was longer than what I would calculate out. So this is something to be aware of. We'll talk about this again in the next video. Let's scroll down a little bit further, take a look at this. This is how it works uh, with a round control. These are actually in the configuration files in CADWorks. You set it right here. Zero, it won't round it up or down at all. One rounds it up, set it to two, it's going to round it down. Three will round it up or down. Again on the weight, if you have it set to zero, it'll calculate the weight for you. And then it talks some about these components that you can stack inside. Here's a bleed ring and a spectacle blind. But again, for these to work, they must have a wafer end type on both ends. And that's done on the component level. All right, great. Why don't you look the user guide over a little bit? And then what we'll do is we'll actually start creating some of these bolts in the specifications.